This edition of the Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by Picture This Photo Books, where remembering is the key ingredient. How beautiful your mother looked at her wedding, and even more so at yours. And who doesn't miss grandma's meatballs? The holidays are coming. What better time to give a gift of remembrance that makes you laugh and cry all at the same time? Whatever gift of grandma's recipes, or just because, those smiles and tears will melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw at 646-798-0809 or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 10% off your first order. Picture This Photo Books, bringing your memories back to life. The whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you the mike wagner show is powered by sonic web studios if you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today mention the mike wagner show and get 20 percent off your project Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. It's time to give a shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international award-winning author, Mian Mosin Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, then you'll love Missing by Mian Mosin Zia. Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries with two strangers and one target where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available in paperback and ebook on Amazon. Missing by Mia Mosin Zia has garnered great reviews and is even loved by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today. Order Missing by Mia Mosin Zia. Now available at Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by SonicWeb Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. SonicWeb Studios is the answer. SonicWeb Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs at below the competition line. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews in Evil Oven and endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and Manilis. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by Picture of This Photo Books, where remembering is a key ingredient. How beautiful your mother looked at her wedding, and even more so at yours. Who doesn't miss Grandma's meatballs, huh? Well, the holidays are coming. What better time to give a gift for memory that makes you laugh and cry all at the same time? Whatever gift for Grandma's recipes or just because... Those smiles and tears will just melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw, Picture This Photo Books at 646-798-0809 or visit PictureThisPhotoBooks.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Picture This Photo Books, bring your memories back to life. The whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you. Also, check out the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com and over 30 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. And don't forget to follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And also support the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com. Also on Anchor FM as well as PayPal. And check out the Mike Wagner Show merchandise at themikewagnershow.com and amazon.com at the Mike Wagner Show podcast, T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, and hoodies, throw pillows, tote bags, and more makes great gifts year-round. Also, uh, great gifts from uh, the Mia Molson Zia store on Amazon. Check out Missing, Once, Wrinkles, and all the cool merchandise. That's Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. And make sure you do so today. We're here with a very terrific gentleman who is out of the New York area. And um, he's known for the smash hit 
from the 70s, Ariel, which was top 20. And of course, uh, some made it to top five, like in Chicago and more, and recently appeared on a six night virtual um, show over at the uh, Edinburgh um, Fringe Fest and um, also composed soundtracks for TV and film, including NBC's uh, Eerie Indiana, also Nickelodeon's Nick Arcade and Central TV series Boom. And also um, released um, a number of uh, great releases like Squirrels in the Attic and also um, also has some other works, too, like um, Dean Zine live stream, the songwriter's handbook. And, of course, a lot more as well. And live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studio somewhere in beautiful New York State, the very multi-talented singer-songwriter of American Lullaby, Dean Friedman. Dean, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, Mike. Pleased to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, it's great to have you on board, too. So you had you had the smash hit Ariel back in the 70s, which we all sang to, um, you know, back in the day, it was top 20. And you recently appeared in a six night uh, virtual um, show of the Edinburgh Fringe Fest. And you also composed soundtracks for TV and film. And you also released um, Squirrels in the Attic. And you also uh, had released um, a number of releases as well, too, like uh, 12 songs. Word and Music, Submarine Races, and um, the Treehouse Journals, and plenty more, even songs for grown-ups. I mean, you have done a lot over the course, and we'll be talking <laughs> about American Lullaby as well, too. And before getting to all that, Dean, tell us how I first got started. Well, I uh, was uh, working a newspaper route in, in Paramus, New Jersey, delivering the Bergen Evening Record, and collected over a summer a bag full of quarters. I uh, took him to 48th Street to man his music, dumped him on the counter, and I said, I'd like that guitar. And uh, I brought it home, learned a few chords, and started uh, you know, playing Beatles songs and the Monkees, and, uh, and eventually got ambitious enough to write some of my own songs. And uh, that was when I was about nine years old, and I never stopped. <laughs> I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I would have done the same thing too at nine. So I pick up something and just keep going and going and going. And what was that one moment that precisely influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your life? Besides pick up that guitar and, um, you know, playing the Beatles. What was that one moment that simply said to you, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? Well, you know, I grew up in a house filled with music. My mom was a, a singer and performer uh, and, and appeared on Broadway and, and film and so I, I knew music was always going to be something that I did. Uh, I guess it might have been one of my first coffee house gigs where uh, I, I played a set and someone handed me 15 bucks. And I thought, wow, gee, this is kind of amazing, getting paid for doing something I, I, I'd love to do anyway. I, I think that's where I saw the future. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm still working on the getting paid part of it. <laughs> I, I think many of us as well, too. It's like, you know, if you love what you're doing, it's not working, all they say, too. So <laughs> and um, and also, who are some of your other favorite artists, musicians growing up besides the Beatles and the other ones you mentioned? Well, Mike, I grew up uh, in an era where there were a lot of really wonderful singer songwriters that came to the fore. Uh, I'm talking about folks like. Joni Mitchell and Paul Simon and James Taylor, uh, Bernie Taupin and Elton John, who, uh, folks who in particular wrote songs that, to my mind, painted very vivid pictures with their words and music. Uh, and, and that's something I always aspired to do starting out. Uh, and, and still to this day when I write, uh, there's something about that kind of a song uh, where it, it it conjures up another place in time uh, and, and invites the listener into the song, almost, uh, you know, making the, the listener a co-conspirator and uh, mm. uh, giving them permission to uh, inviting them to to sort of fill out all the, the details in the song to make it their own. Mm. And that's my goal, because I, I see what I do as someone who writes short stories set to music. And if I can sort of engage the listener to become part of that story uh, and, and to relate it to their own lives. Uh, well, that to me is half the job. Mm -hmm. And what do you mainly base your short stories on? Like, like say, with events happening, your life or like books or anything. What do you mainly base the uh, short stories on when it comes to your music? I guess everything around me. Uh, yeah, I, you could describe me as one of those writers who uh, abides by that axiom that you, you should write about what you know. Uh, so I do write about 
you know, my own life and the life of my family and friends and just the world around me. Uh, but I also make sure to use make ample use of my poetic license, which I always keep in my back pocket in case I'm stopped for excessive uh, alliteration or punning. <laughs> uh, and uh, a poetic license is just a nice way of saying that I have permission as a writer to just lie and make things up. <laughs> Let, let's see your license. I'm sure it's like a driver's license. I'll have to get one of those and put it in my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can make your own in crayon. It doesn't matter. Uh, if you call yourself an artist, then you're allowed to issue yourself a poetic license. Huh. That's rather interesting. And we'll talk about um, a lot of your music. I mean, you have a very interesting discography, including Ariel, and um, also talk about American Lullaby in just one minute. You listen to The Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by SoundCraft Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. SonicWeb Studios is the answer. SonicWeb Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews in Eve Love and endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia. Available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Widener Show is brought to you by Picture This Photo Books, where remembering is a key ingredient. How beautiful your mother looked at a wedding, and even more so at yours. And who doesn't miss grandma's meatballs, huh? Well, the holidays are coming. What better time to give a gift for memories that makes you laugh and cry all at the same time? Whatever gift for grandma's recipes or just because, those smiles and tears will just melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw, Picture This Photo Books at 646-798-0809 or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show, get 10% off your first order. Picture this photo books, bring your memories back to life. The whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show on over 30 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. And don't forget to subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter today. And don't forget to check out the Mike Widener Show merchandise at themikewidenershow.com and also on Amazon at the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia and check out missing ones and wrinkles and great merchants like t shirts, pop sockets hoodies, and more. And don't forget to support The Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, also on Anchor FM and PayPal, and make sure you do so today. We're here with the multi-talented singer-songwriter Dean Friedman here on The Mike Widener Show, and um, you're known for that Smash 70 hits uh, aerial as well, too, and um, that was a very fun tune, and tell us more about that and how'd you get started on it? Well, I grew up in Paramus, New Jersey, deep in the bosom of suburbia, and aerial was sort of my... uh, love song to all these teenage girls I had a crush on growing up as a teenager myself in, in, in Paramus. They were all kind of smushed together into one idealized uh, Ariel. And uh, at first I was a little self-conscious because there was not much of a plot to the song. The guy meets a girl at the mall and they go out on a date and then they wind up uh, – uh, at the house watching TV and making out uh, as the, uh, the, the the Star Spangled Banner signs off the air. Mm, I remember uh, those days, yes. Oh, it's yeah. like 1 a.m., it's like, you better go to bed, guys. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so at first I thought, well, gee, not much happens in the song. Uh, but then I played the, the, the recording for two teenage girls who lived on my block. And they accused me of reading their diaries. <laughs> And so that was the point at which I thought, hmm, maybe I've, I've, I've struck a chord that resonates with, with the, the audience here. And indeed it did, because uh, once it started getting airplay, uh, uh, it became the number one requested song on uh, the top FM station in the country. Hmm. That is very interesting. And of course, you know, a, a very recognizable pop song, free spirit of pot smoking, vegetarian Jewish girl to peasant blouse you know lived and everything else and you know hearing it it's like you know oh my gosh you know it's like (laughs) well it was described by one journalist as the uh, great gatsby of popular music 
uh, and that it conjured up an era with all the, the rich details and evoked those feelings and those sentiments of, of a place and time. Mm. And uh, I, I do like to to put a lot of granular detail in my songs because I think it helps uh, the listener place it in, in, in a place and time. It helps them fill out those details, any gaps with their own imagination and their own experiences. And uh, I, 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 I guess I look forward to that kind of interaction and that kind of audience engagement. Mm -hmm. And of course, speaking of audio engagements as well, too, you also had um, a song called McDonald's Girl, which was officially banned by the BBC, but, um, you know, very right. amusing song. And uh, tell us more about the song uh, McDonald's Girl and makes me hungry for McDonald's right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, McDonald's Girl was just a pure pop song. Uh, and uh, I knew as soon as I wrote it, there's some songs that, you know, that are, are going to have a certain appeal. And, and that was one. Uh, but because of the uh, uh, policies of the the BBC uh, broadcasting system in the United Kingdom, uh, because it is semi-government controlled and non-commercial, they had strict policies against anything that even hinted of being an advertisement. All right. And as a result, they banned the uh, McDonald's Girl when it was released. Uh, it was officially banned by the BBC. Uh, along with uh, the Sex Pistols <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Lola's, uh, uh, the, the the Kinks Lola, because they had to change it from Coca-Cola to Cherry Cola. Oh, uh, yeah, I that remember same that. Reason. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but I couldn't change the chorus to McDonald's Girl. And uh, as a result, it, uh, it got no airplay in the UK. I was dropped by my label. But uh, not too long after that, a then unknown band out of Canada with the unlikely name of Bare Naked Ladies, uh, <laughs> did a cover version of, of my song, McDonald's Girl. Uh, and it became their first airplay hit in Canada and led to them getting a record deal uh, and becoming one of the biggest bands in North America. Uh, and not too long after that, a band called The Blenders had a number one hit with it in Norway. Wow. And uh, it was the little song that could. It insisted on being heard. Because uh, a few years after that, YouTube came along. Uh, and McDonald's Girl went viral all, all over the world. There were people lip syncing or singing their own versions of McDonald's Girl, acting out the story. And uh, acapella groups at you know Ivy League colleges were singing their own arrangements of McDonald's Girl. So it became a hit all by itself. It was a persistent little song, as I say, insisted on being heard. Uh, but it was finally about 33 years after it was released that I, I just a few years ago that I got a call from uh, the McDonald's corporation saying, Mr. Friedman, we would like to license your song for a national TV and radio campaign. Oh, wow. Amazing. And I said, that's what I said. I said, Oh, wow. Well, what mm -hmm. took you so gosh darn long? <laughs> so that's my plan is to write a, a great pop song and then, you know, sit on my ass for about 30 years until someone figures it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I see you having something from McDonald's right now. It's like maybe like a drink or something. And um, I'm having some McDonald's coffee as we speak here. So. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Well, you know what? When it was banned, I was sure that uh, the BBC was afraid immediately upon hearing the song, millions of people would rush out to McDonald's to gorge themselves on hamburgers. But in the lyric, if you listen to the song, I never actually eat the hamburger. It's just a pretext for uh, to get, having an excuse to talk to the girl behind the counter that I was smitten with. Huh. Uh, so I always thought it could be more of a public service announcement, but they never saw it that way. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. I, and, and then when the deal came up where it's like, we want to license you and everything else, I thought you can get a lifetime supply of Big Macs <laughs> along with um, well, you would think what, so. whatever you put on, like a million dollar contract or royalties <laughs> and all that. It's like, ask for Big Macs lifetime. <laughs> yeah, lots and lots of French fries. Oh, you're making me more hungry. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, that came from that album, Well, Well Said, The Rocking Chair. So I had Lydia, Rocking Chair, Woman of Mine. And, um, I mean, you had just about a lot of tunes on there, too. So if you want to talk about those, that's fine. And uh, you also had 12 songs, Word and Music, Submarine Races, Squirrels in the Attic, The Treehouse Journal, Song for Grownups. Rumpel, Romeo, and, um, you know, tell us about some of your um, works as well, too. If you want to talk about some of the singles, that's fine, too. If there's anything else, you know, feel free to talk as well. Well, uh, McDonald's Girl uh, was off my third album, Rumpled Romeo, 
but after it was banned, uh, <laughs> as I say, it did uh, derail my recording career for a while. Uh, but I did get very much involved doing uh, virtual reality video games for Nickelodeon television and uh, doing soundtrack work for TV and the occasional low-budget horror film. Mm -hmm. uh, but finally... Uh, when the internet came along, I was able to reconnect with my audience uh, because uh, I was had a bunch of songs and uh, I wanted to record a new album, but I, I I needed the money to upgrade my studio and pay musicians. So I wrote a, a, an email to the to the folks that had been following my website, and I said, "Look, I'm ready to record a new album, uh, but uh, I, I need to finance it somehow. If you pre-order the CD." then I'll have enough money to go in the studio and start recording. Hmm. And I was a little afraid that everyone would write me back and say, oh, Dean, why don't you get a proper job? <laughs> like, <everybody else. laughs> What proper job? It's like you got enough <laughs> McDonald's already. <laughs> right. So, uh, but in, in, in fact, uh, enough people, well, some people did write that, <laughs> but enough people were supportive of the idea that I uh, was able to uh, go back in the studio and, and record a new album, which was uh, the Treehouse Journals. This was in 2001, uh, and this was almost uh, eight years before Kickstarter and crowdfunding ever uh, existed. Mm -hmm. So this is really one of the very first uh, crowdfunding efforts on the Internet. Wow. Uh, and I've been crowdfunding my albums ever since then. Uh, and for that, I am uh, eternally grateful to my enthusiastic listening audience because they make it possible for me to do what I do. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you also had some uh, others as well, too, like a million matzo balls. George Washington slept here. Saturday Fathers. And uh, also, I bought a vampire motorcycle. And um, I mean, you're just all over the gamut on this stuff. <laughs> and uh, live the Duke of York. And I'm looking over here. It's just like, you know, boys, it's like. I want to take these and uh, turn these into a story for my kids and uh, and grandkids. It's like, I mean, you just have a plethora. That's enough to um, entertain, like, you know, generations of stories of stories, bedtime stories and everything. Well, Mike, I've been doing it for a while, and uh, I've got about nine studio albums under my belt. Uh, the, the newest one, American Lullaby, is my ninth studio album. But as he referenced, uh, I've also got a couple of kids' albums out. I've written a lot of kids' songs, and... And there have been, since I've released them, there have been at least one or two generations of kids that have grown up listening to those silly kid songs with apparently no ill effects, at least so far. Uh, so, yeah, I like I say, I just uh, started writing songs when I was nine and I never stopped. <laughs> and uh, I have no plans to stop in the near future either. And of course, you know, make sure you eat your McDonald's and that's how you keep going. <laughs> well, I'm not sure about that. But uh, whatever it is that uh, fuels you and motivates you, uh, that's, uh, you know, w w worth paying attention to uh, mm -hmm. to get the job done. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly amazing as well, too. We'll talk about American Lullaby from Dean Friedman in just a minute. You listen to The Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by official sponsor of The Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson's Zia Missing, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Also brought to you by Picture This Photo Books, Remembering is a Key Ingredient. Call Karen Shaw at 646-798-0809 or visit PictureThisPhotoBooks.com. And we'll be back with the multi-talented singer-songwriter Dean Friedman with American Lullaby after this timeout. This edition of The Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by Picture This Photo Books, where remembering is a key ingredient. How beautiful your mother looked at her wedding and even more so at yours. And who doesn't miss grandma's meatballs? The holidays are coming. What better time to give a gift of remembrance that makes you laugh and cry all at the same time? Whatever gift of grandma's recipes or just because, those smiles and tears will melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw at 646-798-0809 or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 10% off your first order. Picture this photo books, bringing your memories back to life. They're whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Me and Moshe Zia. 
He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers. And if there's one thing you can count on in these unpredictable times, it's that you're in good hands getting some great radio, courtesy of The Mike Wagner Show. We're back at singer-songwriter Dean Freeman, best known for his hit Ariel back in the 70s here on The Mike Wagner Show. And going from the gamut, going from Ariel to McDonald's Girl, also um, to... uh, some some TV series and NBC's Erie, Indiana, and a bunch of um, albums in between. And we come across your newest with American Lullaby. And uh, let's uh, talk about your album. What inspired you to, um, to, to go with the album? Well, the new album, American Lullaby, is my personal reaction to all the crazy stuff that has happened here in America and really around the world over the last couple of years. And uh, I know uh, th- th- there have been difficult times for a lot of people. And as a songwriter, uh, you know, I, my pr- sort of innate reaction is to try and wrap my head around what's going on by writing a song. Uh, and, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily, I mean, that I understand what's happening, but at the very least, I try and address it and acknowledge it uh, because, uh, you know, there are a lot of issues that we're grappling with today uh, that uh, we can't ignore or make believe it didn't happen because uh, there are more things coming down the pike we need to be prepared for. And so uh, that's part of what I see my job as a singer songwriter uh, to do is to uh, sort of talk about things in my life uh, that I care about, uh, even if they're confusing. And uh, to to share them with whoever cares to listen. And so American Lullaby uh, addresses a lot of the difficult topics that we're grappling with. The uh, the very sort of serious cultural split here in America uh, and and our pretty dysfunctional politics at the moment uh, on top of the pandemic, which is ongoing on top of the climate crisis, which people used to call a pending climate crisis or the looming climate crisis. Apparently, it's no longer looming, nor is it pending. It's here and now. Mm-hmm. The West Coast is on fire. Europe is underwater. Uh, you know, uh, hurricanes are and, bashing and, and, the and, south. Of course, and, of course, New York got flooded and some areas got hit with a major drought. Crops pretty much uh, withered up. And, um, and of course, you know, along the south, you know, hurricanes galore seemed like hurricanes every day. We're probably in, like, maybe Hurricane um, Johnny next up, Hurricane um, Karen or Hurricane um, Larry or maybe Hurricane... Um, Marsh or something it's like every day comes across these hurricanes. I'm looking forward to Hurricane Mo because I don't think we've ever had a Hurricane Mo, and I just like the sound of that <laughs> Hurricane Mo. I hope it's a little squall and just dissipates and doesn't hurt anybody. <laughs> but uh, th- th- that's my look. But the, simply the point is, is that uh, the album is filled with all the things that everybody uh, I know is concerned about on a daily basis. Uh, but even though I was dealing with what I knew were often difficult topics, I, I, I wanted to find some kind of format to, to discuss them that wasn't going to just send people screaming, running off into the hills. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and that's why I used the model of a lullaby. Because if you think about it, Mike, all lullabies in every culture around the world share one very curious uh, property in common, which is that as a parent is trying to lull their little baby to sleep, Mm -hmm. singing a very soothing, gentle melody in a a quiet, comforting tone. Uh, 
Mm. If you listen to the words they're singing, they're terrifying. The the lyrics to lullabies and, and fairy tales are filled with all these horrible things that happen to kids. Mm-hmm. And think about Rockabye Baby. Rockabye Baby yeah, on the treetop. Tree top. It's like, <laughs> when the wind blows, we're going to knock you out. <laughs> That's right. The cradle will rock. The bow breaks. The, the kid falls. The cradle falls on its head. First of all, Mike, I got to ask. What is this kid doing up in the tree in the first place? I, I get. I guess that's a question I never bother to ask, and I never figured it out. And of course, we can always look it up online. I mean, we got our phones, we got um, our laptops, and we got the uh, the Fitbits, and soon to be like Dick Tracy Rich wristwatches back yeah. in the day. <laughs> and I'm sure everybody's scrambling to it right now. And of course, if you're listening, if you uh, find out, um, you know, the answer to it, let us. know. No end. Um, <laughs> well, well, it's a good point, and I did think about it, Mike, and I concluded finally that uh, that a likely reason is that parents everywhere share a universal desire to prepare their kids for what's to come, for their futures, to to instill important lessons in those gentle nursery rhymes and lullabies, uh, uh, to to. Prepare kids as they grow and face the world for some of the terrors, some of the dangers that they're likely to face. Uh, And uh, they don't want to send them out into the world completely unarmed and unprepared. And and I think that's the function of of a lullaby. Uh, But again, they don't want to terrify them, so they do it in a soothing way. And so that was my model for my new album, American Lullaby. Uh, I'm dealing with a lot of serious topics. I'm dealing with uh, the original sins of America. the massacre of the indigenous population, 200 plus years of slavery, uh, all both abetted by our inexplicable love affair with guns, uh, unique to any modern civilization. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it, I, I love America. I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud of so many things that America has done and stands for. But there are things that I'm not proud of that we've done. And uh, people say, oh, well, that's in the past, but it's not. The past is really not the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it continues and persists to this day. And, and unless we face some of these mistakes we've made, unless we acknowledge them, then we are doomed to repeat them uh, in the future. So, what, what, was there some philosopher that said that, that we're doomed to repeat history? Who, who's on? I've heard that phrase. Who's the, one, the philosopher that said that? I can't remember. Is it Santiana or something? Uh, or who might well be. I'm sure it's history? been said in many forms in many ways. Because it's just a, a a fact of life, and you know it's okay. You know, I tell my kids, you know, it's okay if you want to lie to me or if you want to lie to your teacher, but that's not a good idea. But it, it, it's not the worst thing in the world. But what's not acceptable at all is, is if you lie to yourself. Because mm. if you lie to yourself, then you're really setting yourself up for harm. And uh, and, and that's how I feel about America is that we can't lie to ourselves about how we got here. Because the problems we're facing today, we just didn't get here overnight. Uh, some of their origins go back hundreds of years. Uh, and it, it, we're not going to be able to fix some of these problems unless we admit that. Uh, it doesn't mean we're horrible. It, it just means that we make mistakes. We got to improve. We got to do better. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, that's some of the subject matter in the new album. But also anyone that's familiar with with uh, with my albums and the music that I make knows that it's really eclectic and that there's always an ample dose of humor and silliness, even in the most serious <laughs> songs that I, I, I write and, and record. And uh, so I promise that you listeners that the album American Lullaby is not all doom and gloom. Uh, in fact, it's got a lot of infectious fun stuff in it uh, included with some of the serious stuff. And so far, the reaction to it has been really strong and positive and powerful. And and for that, I'm really grateful. And, of course, you got some songs in there, too, like Halfway Normal World, The Russians Are Coming, Welcome to Stupid Town on a Summer's Night, and Just Another Birthday Song. I like that one. So, <laughs> Well, you know what? The Hill Sisters, two kindergarten teachers, wrote uh, the happy birthday that we all know uh, 125 years ago. Wow. Uh, it was something they wrote uh, to get their kindergarten students to to sing along and uh, it's a great song i love it but i figure like 
you know, they had a good run. It might be time for a new one. And so that's why I, I, I wrote just another birthday song and included it on the new album. Uh, in part also to remind myself and anyone who cares to listen that even in the midst of difficult times, uh, which we're going through still, that even in the midst of those difficult times, it's still incumbent upon us to to be clear eyed about those gifts and blessings that we do enjoy and to uh, cherish them and to celebrate them. Uh, and uh, so that's why uh, in an album that's filled with songs about the climate disaster and the pandemic and crazy politics, uh, a song like just another birthday song is a reminder that we, we still have to get up every day and show up and, and live our lives and and celebrate those good things uh, that are worth celebrating. And what are some of the other problems that you uh, en- encounter or you uh, take head on in this album as well, too, besides the uh, the racism, the fracture politics and culture war, climate change and everything else? What are some of the other um, you know topics that you all it take on the album? Well, it really does run the gap. <laughs> um, I, uh, you know, I, I, I address the politics to a degree. Uh, and uh, uh, not to upset some of your listeners, but uh, one of the songs is titled The Russians Are Coming. And I'm a quarter Russian. My uh, grandmother, my nana, uh, was actually born in, uh, in Odessa. Oh, I guess wow. what used to be the Ukraine and then mm-hmm. came over here as an infant. So I, I guess I'm one quarter Russian. Uh, but uh, I wrote the song trying to understand what happened in the 2016 uh, election. And what I did was I downloaded and I read the Senate Intelligence Committee's report on Russian interference in the 2016 election. Bearing in mind, Mike, that it was a bipartisan committee. Republicans and Democrats, both sides of the aisle, examined the evidence and wrote this report. And it inclu- it concluded pretty conclusively <laughs> that there was a lot of Russian interference in the 2016 election and that folks like, you know, Paul Manafort and Roger Stone uh, were deeply involved uh, in that. And uh, and everyone says, well, how come no one was indicted? Well, the reason is because Paul Manafort and Roger Stone kept their mouth shut. Hmm. And that's what the song is about. Uh, and I invited my uh, my cousin, Dilsky Sonobovich, to uh, narrate the, the words to the Russians are coming. And it's all done in good fun, but telling a truthful story, which is factually based uh, on the congressional record. So if anyone wants to refute the lyrics to that song or or what happened, uh, they can just go online to the government website, download the bipartisan report from the Senate Intelligence Committee and decide for themselves. Hmm. I thought we blamed it on vodka all this time. Now we know. Thanks for clearing it up. Now we're not going to blame it on vodka. So. Well, I tell you the truth. I'm sure vodka played a large role in whatever <laughs> transpired. So that's why Manafort and um, and the rest kept their mouths shut. They're drinking too much vodka. They couldn't speak after a while. <laughs> I'm sure that was the case. <laughs> Must have been pretty good vodka. I'll have to find out what brand they drank and we can just try it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, and of course, you also had Welcome to Stupid Town on a summer's night and um, and maybe just a few more you want to talk about if there's if there's anything else you want to cover as well, too, like with other albums or other releases or what's coming up. Feel free to do so as well. Well, there's another track on the new album that that a lot of people enjoy. It's called Too Much Stuff. Uh, I hope you'll get a chance to play it on your show. It's uh some might view it as a uh, a sort of a satirical take on obsessive consumerism, uh, but uh, others might consider it uh, a reflection of the fine line between being an astute collector of rare artifacts versus being an out and out hoarder. And the funny thing is, Mike, is that almost all of my family and friends uh, are convinced that I wrote the song just for them. <laughs> <laughs> Blame and, it on Amazon for collecting. <laughs> exactly. Well, there you go. Uh, but I think uh, a lot of people that hear too much stuff uh, and all the things that I've collected uh, will uh, relate to a, a great degree to the sentiments expressed in the song. 
Huh, interesting. I mean, I collect uh, coffee mugs. I have beer can collection back in the 70s when it was big. Does that mean we have to get rid of get rid of collections or something? It doesn't at all. It's I'm a, it's, <laughs> it's our nature, and uh, it's just fun to poke fun at it now and now and then. <laughs> I guess I have to re-examine my uh, collecting policies as well too. And, uh, and where can we find American Lullaby and all your works at, Dean? Mike, uh, your listeners can find uh, American Lullaby on my website, which is deanfriedman dot com. Uh, but also on all the likely uh, streaming services uh, like Spotify and uh, Apple Music and Amazon. And you can purchase the CDs as well on Amazon and uh, as long as, as well as my many al- albums and CDs and books. And uh, the only thing I would say is that I-, I encourage your listeners to stream the music as much as possible and hopefully listen to it on your station when it's playlisted. Uh, but uh, I also would remind them that the streaming services uh, don't pay artists much at all. They pay them a thousandth of a penny. It, so the only way artists can survive if it, is if uh, listeners, their audience, purchase CDs and the like directly from the artist's website. So as I say, stream to your heart's content but purchase direct from the artist, and that makes a difference. And, and of course, why Spotify, uh, you know, users out there, it's like you got to do this like one trillion times. So help them out, one trillion. <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> or, or is it, um, or is it Google? It's like I've lost track after a while. <laughs> so. Well, they all uh, are, are structured that way. It's it's criminal. It's abusive. Uh, it, it needs to be changed by legislation uh, because it means a whole generation of musicians. Will will not be able to make a living or pursue their livelihoods, uh, and it needs to be corrected uh, because uh, you know I, I I won't go on and on about it, but uh, these big companies are making billions of dollars, and and the, the fo- folks that that run them are billionaires, but the artists that contribute all the content uh, are uh, you know uh, borrowing money <laughs> to to get to you know. To, to their offices or, you know, from one place to the other. Mm-hmm. And, and I can see where crowdfunding comes in. I can see all these people out there. Damn you, Bezos! Damn you, Bezos! And all that. So, <laughs> uh, Yeah, I mean, look, I'm I'm all for outer space. I think uh, it'd be fun to, 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 to wind up <laughs> with a base on the moon and, and Mars. But I think we can do two things at once. Uh, you know, I, I think we can explore space. But also a portion money to to treat the arts fairly, uh, and not just artists. Really, uh, you know, the whole way our our, our society is structured. One thing that the pandemic has uh, really highlighted in stark relief is the huge systemic inequities that that exist. You know, we we applaud essential workers as heroes, but we don't want to pay them. Uh, and you know what? I, uh, I'd rather that firemen, policemen. And, and nurses and doctors, uh, well, doctors, they're covered, but uh, the rest of them, I'd rather they they get paid uh, a fair, equitable wage uh, than be called heroes. Uh, and I'd say the same is true of all those uh, lower wage, uh, ser- you know, essential services, people that served us in restaurants. Uh, and, and it really is, it's just simply unfair and unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Uh, not every society is structured the way America is. I mean, healthcare is one ba- basic example. I spent a lot of time right, in the United yeah. Kingdom. Mm-hmm. They, they complain about their national health system, but they have a national health system. Uh, and we're still, you know, trying to wrap our heads around the concept. And it's just kind of foolish and, and idiotic that uh, in this day and age, uh, America uh, just still allows people to go bankrupt if they get sick. Just it's just wrong and, and unnecessary. And, and of course, some people are wanting the uh, Canada system as well, too. But the Canadians complain about the system. It's like you know, everybody looks to us as a model, but we complain about it. England. You know, complains about the ever crisis, and it's almost like, yeah, I'm speechless about this whole thing. Yeah, well, it's a puzzle, uh, but eventually people will figure it out because it works everywhere else in the world. Uh, and, uh, some, for some reason, in the United States, we're still not willing to do it. And the reason is simple because the powers that be don't want to change a system that benefits them. 
Mm -hmm. And and that'll be another topic for another time as well, too. And uh, we're here with uh, singer-songwriter Dean Freeman of American Lullaby here on the Mike Widener Show. Just a few more minutes and love to have you back on. You've been absolutely amazing. And what can we expect from you in 2021 and beyond, Dean? Well, uh, I am dedicated to doing what I can to get the word out about the new album. Uh, I, I'm really proud of it. And uh, the reaction so far has been really, really positive. A lot of folks that have been following my music and listening to it for, you know, four decades plus now uh, claim that it's the best thing I've ever done. And that's gratifying to hear. You know, you, you always want to at least not get any worse. But um, <clears throat> So uh, I'm committed to the songs and to the music and the recording uh, to to do what I can, uh, like I'm doing now, talking to you, Mike, mm-hmm. uh, to get the word out there, to invite folks to just take a listen and uh, see if it's something that, that, that strikes a chord that, that moves you in some way uh, that you can relate to. And uh, so far, a lot of folks have said, yeah, that, that sounds just about right. Mm-hmm. And I've listened to it myself, too. And that is totally amazing. It's like, you know, my kids are grown, but it's like I'll probably do the uh, lullaby with hats of my cat or dog and uh, to the tune as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great to hear, Mike. I appreciate it. That's amazing as well, too. And who do you consider biggest influence in the career, Dean? Well, uh, as I said earlier, I always have an, had an affinity for uh, singer songwriters who are storytellers and paint pictures with their words and music. And I would include folks like Joni Mitchell and Paul Simon and James Taylor and uh, Randy Newman. Uh, 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 You know, Bernie Taupin and Elton John. Uh, Those are songs that really had an impact on me growing up. But I also always had eclectic tastes. There was always some Broadway show tune on on the piano uh, or some classical aria on the turntable. Uh, I love jazz and folk and rock and country and you name it. Uh, That's why uh, sometimes my albums are being uh, have been accused by critics of being a little too eclectic. (laughs) But I take that as a compliment, Mike, uh, because I love all kinds of music. And for me, as a storyteller, uh, I I try to to use the genre that I think best serves the story that's being told. And that's very amazing, too. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Well, the best advice (laughs) to anybody, including musicians, I would say, is trust your instincts. Try not to always please everybody around you, because if you live your life pleasing other people, you're going to have a miserable life. Uh, Try to find out what you care about, things that are important to you. and. Uh, do what you can to pursue those pursuits. As you said earlier, you you said yourself, you know, that if you find uh, uh, work that you love, it no longer becomes work. Uh, it still means you work hard at it, but you're motivated and, and uh, you're driven to to do it well because it's something that you care about. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, try to find what your passion is. And, and 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 sometimes you can't always get rich following your your bliss and your passion, but you can usually find a, a, a parallel path in that same general vicinity where you can make a living while you also do the things that you love. Yeah. Uh, that, that's what my mom told me when I was when she realized I was going to be a, a musician uh, for a living. She said, "Well, always make sure you can find another way to pay the bills." And uh, at first I laughed at her, but at the end of the day, that served me well. Because even after I was dropped by my label because the McDonald's girl was banned, I I still was able to make a living and and pay the bills, keep the electricity turned on and food on the table by doing things that I also loved. Uh, You know, there was usually some musical component to it, but I wound up designing video games and doing museum exhibits and uh, engaged in virtual reality. It was all fun stuff. There was always, as I say, some musical component to it. But it it was because I uh, pursued those things that I found really interesting and and tried to to find ways to make money within those interests. So that's the best advice I can give for whatever it's worth. 
And you can thank the Geico lizard for that as well, too. So that's what I think of. So, <laughs> okay, there you go. I would not argue with the Geico lizard. He that's knows what he's right, talking yeah. about. <laughs> Once again, singer, songwriter, Dean Freeman of American Lullaby here on the Mike Wagner Show. Dean of Bear Beak, thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you back in 2021 beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. Once again, tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact you, where can people purchase or check out your music, especially American Lullaby. Well, the best way to find me is visit my website. It's deanfriedman.com. And uh, I can also be found on Facebook uh, and Twitter and YouTube. Uh, just type Dean Friedman in your uh, search engine and all those uh, social media sites, those websites will pop up and you'll be able to get in touch. And the best way is just send me an email to Dean at DeanFriedman.com and uh, put you on the email list to get uh, my monthly newsletter, keep you up to date about uh, recordings and tour dates because I, I, I have to confess, Mike, I've never toured in your neck of the woods, but I really hope to someday soon. So uh, if enough folks uh, get in touch, uh, I'll, uh, I'll aspire to do just that because it'll be a lot of fun. Just let us know when you're coming up and I'll show you around the town as well, too. So you let me know and we'll just go from there. So <laughs> that sounds great. We'll go out to McDonald's. <laughs> sounds good. Yeah. And uh, more than McDonald's. We'll we'll lay our plans on McDonald's. Once again, singer, songwriter, Dean Freeman and Mike Wagner show. Dean, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having it soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. And you've been absolutely fantastic. We definitely wish you all the best. Thanks a lot, Mike. All the best. You too. Take care. Now don't you cry It's an American lullaby Manifest destiny's a lie It's an American lullaby Half moon sailing through the night Crack of a musket fired first light Always keep your powder dry It's an American lullaby Rest your head in dreams you'll fly It's an American lullaby Blaze a trail across the sky It's an American lullaby Drinking gourd will point the way Stealth by night and sleep by day Like Joe, you can rely. It's an American lullaby. And clench your fist and dry your eye. It's an American lullaby. Judgment served from up on high. Lullaby One fine night in paradise A God of thunder rolls the dice A thousand rounds to 
light up the sky It's an American lullaby In restless dreams we shall defy But TV pundits prophesy Best laid plans have gone awry It's an American lullaby He said, I cannot tell a lie Cross my heart and hope to die Still won't look you in the eye Close your eyes now, sleep is nigh It's an American lullaby Cross the shallows, do or die It's an American lullaby Headlights shining in the dark Coyotes howl, the bloodhounds bark You can hear the angels sigh It's an American lullaby short supply It's an American lullaby this photo books, where remembering is the key ingredient. Preserving memories, keeping the memories of your loved ones alive as they reach in and touch your heart, how beautiful your mother looked at her wedding, and even more so at yours. The holidays are coming. What better time to give a gift of remembrance that makes you laugh and cry all at the same time. Whether it's a gift of past holidays, grandma's recipes, long ago moments, or just because, those smiles and tears will melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw at 646-798-0809. Once again, that's 646-798-0809. Or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley, and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. 
If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds whether big, small, established or startup impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving and increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Thanks for listening to the Mike Wagner Show powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.